Anatomy of the Human Gray Body, Gray Anatomy, Gregory Nolan Odell. Anatomy of the Human Gray Body illustrates the subtle features of extraterrestrial anatomy from true accounts. This text is not intended to show a wide range of different life forms that may inhabit the means of suitable worlds just like our own. The approach in these few pages is an illustration of the most common variety, which commonly appear in the bedroom after awakening from a deep sleep, unduly labeled grays. Extraterrestrial visitation is not a new age phenomenon, nor should all encounters be discarded as hallucinations by so-called experts who have not had such an experience. Ancient Sanskrit texts and other historic records account for these experiences in great detail. These elaborate stories have survived the rise and fall of many empires, accumulating to today's Roswell era extraterrestrial alien encounters. It is of no consequence if these beings are described as angels, spirits, or aliens. Most encounters bear striking similarities that are too descriptive to be anything less than real. Similarity also creates absurdities in regard to place, time, and nature of the encounters, which are typically in the bedroom at some twilight hour in the presence of a being not of this world. The logistic of boarding an alien craft too big for the bedroom door or trying to rationalize how the humanoid got into the bedroom without a key in the first place, which is a couple of categorical reports that have extended these stories unbelievable. Real accounts from credible sources also deteriorate because of the determinate nature of natural languages. Language, any language, has tended to migrate over time to the complex away from truth. Cultural definitions neutralize genuine extraterrestrial experiences with false somatic holograms, such as Hollywood gray encounters, really deep inside human consciousness by television and many other multimedia channels. Sadly, these genuine experiences are natural occurrences and are usually meant to improve the well-being of the so-called victim. The term gray is now a household word with fixed features. These additional characteristics determine what a gray type alien must look like and how a gray must act, diluting the memories of actual experience. The point is that little, if nothing, can we imagine on our own, most of what we hold true is actually predetermined by additional definitions. Many people advocate for free speech. However, few ever consider the choices they make could be predetermined by their own language. The way we think is vastly influenced by our own inner talk. What we say to ourselves in the quiet of our minds can and does determine how we understand. If by linguistic relatively our language restricts self-expression, then it makes good sense. The way we talk to ourselves also restricts the way we think. Most importantly, what we say to ourselves today control our very actions. It's of no consequence that our ease to interpret one language to another is rooted in some universal or the lineage of iniquity to a common great-grandmother. What we say to ourselves today controls our very actions, inner talk. What we say to ourselves in the quiet of our minds is the way humans understand. If we analyze the essential features of the way we speak and the way we think, we can easily identify and redefine words or phrases of particular cultural emphasis which predetermine our opinions. In other words, by applying a few principles of linguistics, the way we speak to the way we think, we can, with a little effort, loosen the bonds of cultural control, guaranteeing our right to freely reason on our own. Thus, to think freely is to refine our inner talk by redefining words or phrases that have bred false beliefs, such as the term gray. We all praise rationality, but seldom do we apply the same criteria in the quiet of our own minds. In my own case, the word gray has been redefined after a sudden realization that the term gray is synonymous to devatma, a Sanskrit term used to describe extraterrestrial encounters as etched on ancient clay tablets, figure 002. Gray encounters are not a New Age phenomena, as plot on additional Roswell, New Mexico timeline marked by the reported UFO crash of 1947. Ancient religions clearly account for the existence of these entities, but have been put off by 19th century Christian linguistic as dramatic primitive myths. This wave of Stone Age religious intolerance still causes havoc today 
as embedded linguistic determinants. More specifically, the Hindu term Atma or Javatman has historic importance as evidence of the existence of these beings. Conversely, what is viewed as gray in the West and viewed as Javatmas in the East are in fact synonymous terms. Unfortunately, both positions are considered credulous by the determinate nature of complex languages. Countless pages of ancient as well as contemporary texts describe Javatma's soul or agent as a personification of an individual experience in the material world. The Javatma body or etheric body lives for eons. It is the only semi-permanent body of awareness after the death of the human body, most notably bodies. The etheric body is a common term for the etheric plane of action from which the Javatma operates. This plurist view of multiple bodies is shared by Christian, Hebrew, and Islamic faiths, as well as the majority of worldly religions. Any view that includes a human body and a separate heavenly soul body share the pluralist view of multiple bodies. The heavenly afterlife in which the soul dwells is also a belief in multidimensional planes. It seems odd to justify what is commonly understood as true. However, the determinants of language begs complex explanations to arrive at the same simple truths. Hinduism, as well as many other Eastern religions, describe the Javatma or Gray as an individual personification of the self as countless lives of transmigration are born and die in different states of reincarnation. Therefore, Gray type experiences are not in every case alien to those that report the encounter and are in some cases themselves, respectively. However, it makes good sense to evaluate these reports as viewed from the first person, the physical body. Although the attributes of the gray body seem immensely complex, it is best to view the experience just as it is without complex metaphysical explanation or science fiction absurdities. A contribution to the body of knowledge in regard to the purpose and action of the Vatma body seems fruitless because the intense historic evidence is describing the Vatma are readily available in libraries and electronic texts. Western explanations typically describe extraterrestrial visitation as aliens from outer space, while in the East, Javatma experiences relate to inner space. Although volumes of information have been written explaining the purpose of the Javatma body, illustrations are lacking or non existent. Anatomy of the human gray body illustrates what a human gray body actually looks like and why grays look the way they do. Conversely, medical authorities try to account gray type bedroom experience of phantoms of sleep paralysis. Typically, the patient describes a visual experience whereas the patient has lost all control of body movements, including speech. It is misleading to lump all alien encounters into this unexplored area, even though the symptoms are very similar. It would be just as misleading and dangerous to lump all sleep paralysis episodes as alien encounters, some of which can be signs of serious medical conditions. Unfortunately, and very possibly, patients suffering from serious medical ailments that include symptoms of sleep paralysis have been grouped with healthy patient populations reporting alien encounters, jeopardizing medical prognosis and research. Gray encounters can happen before, during, and after the condition of sleep paralysis. It is safe to say, from my own childhood experience, that many reported adult episodes of sleep paralysis also happen at an earlier adolescent age. If the majority of children of my own age did talk about sleep paralysis syndrome on a regular basis, then quite possibly sleep paralysis is misidentified as a catch-all prognosis. Extraterrestrial experiences while sleeping occur during a subliminal period of psychologists call the unconscious, or might ideally a higher level of conscious awareness. Seemingly realism and idealism fail to give good answers for the gray type phenomena. In order to understand the physics and nature of these beings, one must actually move into and move about in the same consciousness awareness of their nighttime guests. This moving into is a natural state of human consciousness synchronized to the twilight moment of the experience. The alien experience of bedroom variety coin grays are categorical of multidimensional type entities or beings bearing several or different bodies that correspond to the dimensions from which they operate. 
This is not to say that greys are just phantoms or spirits for aliens of this category, or certainly the most capable intellects of quantum physics, or any other science, including those beyond our own most current technology. Intellectic travel by craft, instrument, or wave is neither beneath nor beyond the capabilities. Just the most advanced technology of Earth are guarded from the profane. So to exist, an extraterrestrial type hierarchy of command. This higher court resembles a platonic monarchy based on experience and service. This all-volunteer force oversees and protects many seed colonies, such as Earth, from disturbances caused by careless, or in some rare cases, aggressive alien clans or genre. This complex power system is baffling to the Westerner, whose ideal of an alien has been corrupted by multimedia grave fantasy, such as my own case. My previous mental picture of understanding or somatic domains put the terms gray and javatma into separate categorical universes, rendering a common false belief. East is east, and west is west. The twain should never meet. Profound consequences await thousands of misguided cases incorrectly categorized as Hollywood type gray encounters, but carelessly discarded as hallucinations by so called experts who have not. Figure 3. Freeing one's somatic domain of sci-fi clutter is the simplest way to edit memories. Once our minds are free of useless aberrations, we are able to recall or reproduce things previously seen with startling accuracy, clarity, and vividness. Microsoft.